Hello and welcome to a programming edition of The Postcard Professor, where we explore the practical use of programming in engineering and physics. In this video, we're going to be exploring the basic usage of Python through a tool called Google Colab. So if we search for Google Colab, uh, the first option will give us a Welcome to Collaboratory page. So what we want to do from this is choose a new notebook, uh, which is going to give us something nice and clean. Now, my page here will look a little bit different than yours. And the reason it does is because I've gone to Tools and Settings, and I've chosen this Adaptive theme. So that will be a little bit different. Uh, we have some other options here as well. The one that matters the most for me right now is I'm going to change the font size so that it's a little bit easier for you all to read what I'm doing. So I'm going to change that to 18. Uh, there's some other options here in just showing how things show up. Um, we don't need to worry about uh, Google Pro or GitHub. Uh, the miscellaneous, these are purely for fun. If you have some time, play around with those. They're kind of funny. Regardless, we now have a clean programming environment that we can use in order to perform some basic programming tasks. Now, before we get started, it's helpful to name the notebook that you're using. So I'm going to just call this basic collab tutorial. And there's some helpful commands that I like to use at the beginning of every code. So those are reset uh, from numpy import all and from matplotlib pyplot import all. So this first command gets rid of anything, any variable definitions that may be saved uh, from previous runs. The second thing imports brings in a bunch of variable definitions like pi and some function definitions like square root. It also will bring up a lin space command that we'll use later. This third line allows us to access some plot commands. So using this, we'll be able to create some plots later. Now, as good practice for any program that you write, it's very helpful to write comments. So a comment in Python is anything that starts with a hash sign like this. And the important thing about it is that it is ignored by the program. So we can write whatever we want there. And really what we're doing here is we're writing notes to ourselves and to other people that might be using this code. So I'm going to write a few comments just explaining what these first three lines of code do. Now, it's not strictly necessary to write those comments. The, the code will function exactly the same with or without them. The reason I'm putting them in there is to remind myself of what those things do. As we're writing a program, as we're trying to think of something that we can do with Python, it's helpful to use comments to write out the basic goal of what we're doing and then flesh that out in actual code. So for instance, let's say that we know the area of a circle and we want to calculate its radius. And we know that the equation that we're going to be using here is that the area is equal to pi times r squared. So that's the equation, and we're solving that for radius. We're saying here that we know the area. And so we give that as a variable. We're defining area as a variable here. And we're going to give that a value. And so that is going to have a value of 10. And it's helpful anytime that we're assigning a value like this that we, we tell what the units are. So in this case, the area is in meters squared. And now what we're trying to solve is the radius. So the radius, if we do our math right, is going to be r is equal to area divided by pi. And that entire thing should be a square root. So that should be our formula here. So the square root of the area divided by pi. Now in my comments up here, I, I used r as the name. In my code, I used radius as the name. 
it doesn't matter what we call these things, right? We could call them X, Z, uh, P, whatever. It, it doesn't matter, but it's always useful to have as helpful of names as possible whenever we are writing code. Our goal is that we can look back at this later and understand what we were trying to do. So when I'm trying to define the area, I'm going to use the area. And if I wanted to be even more specific, say that we were doing multiple areas, then I could call this the area of the circle. Um, and using capitals to split up words is a good way of doing it. You can also use underscores. So you could say that this is the area of the circle. And of course, we need to be careful to go ahead and use the proper name everywhere whenever we change it. So if you double click on something, it'll highlight the entire variable name and you can see where else that pops up. If I misspell this, then that doesn't pop up exactly the same way. So I can, I can kind of check my code as I write to make sure that I'm spelling things correctly. Let's be a little extra here and call this the radius of the circle, which is going to be square root of the area of the circle divided by pi. Now, pi is a variable that we have not defined, but like I said before, numpy actually gives us access to that variable pi. So we don't need to write out that pi is equal to 3.1514, blah, blah, blah. We can just use pi as a variable. Just from this, we have calculated the radius of that circle. If we press the play button, it will run through the code. Now you can see that it completed. Uh, there are no errors, otherwise that would pop up. For instance, if I messed up that spelling, like I said before, then we would get a name error. It would say the area of the circle is not defined. And so that that is just saying that we tried to use something and it didn't know what it was. So running it like so, nothing popping up below just tells us that it did run correctly. However, it's not actually spitting anything out for us to see. And so what we need to do is use a print statement. And so the simplest way of doing this is to just print the radius of the circle. And actually, now that we've run it once, it actually allows us to autocomplete. So we have defined the radius of the circle, and so now we can autocomplete that radius. And so we spit that out, and we see that the radius is 1.784, blah, blah, blah. This isn't the perfect output because that's just a number that's spitting out. In reality, what we'd prefer is we'd prefer to give it something that's legible. What we can do is we can put a string in front of this and we can say that the radius is that value. And then that string, the radius, the string is defined by those two apostrophes. The radius is equal to the value that we had before. And if we wanted to do a little bit more, we could include the units here. So now it says that the radius is 1.784 meters. We can get more complicated with our print statements. I'm not going to cover that in this video. It's already going to be long enough, but that is a easy way to keep track of what these different values that we're printing out mean. Just give it a short definition and include the units. This is all I want to do with this section of code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new code block. This is going to be intended to run separately, but it's in the same notebook. This is a good way to separate out problems whenever you are doing a homework set in Colab, for instance. Uh, so if you have multiple problems that you want to include on a single document, you can keep them all together, but still have some separation in those code blocks. So, we're going to copy those first three lines, right? We want to reset. We don't want anything from our first block to contaminate what's happening in our second block. These are intended to be two completely separate blocks of code. Now, what we're going to do this time is we are going to create a plot. What we want to do is we want to use the plot command, which is going to have some group of X values and Y values. And so we need to define both of those things. If you ever want to see what a command requires, you can hover over it and it'll bring up a 
bit of information about it. Now, oftentimes there's just way too much information for you to use, but if you scroll down a bit, you can usually find some examples that are a little bit helpful. So the base usage of plot is just to have some amount of X's and some amount of Y's. And so that's what we're going to do. We're gonna have an X and a Y value. We can define these X's manually by using a list in Python. So we're gonna have zero, one, two, three, four, as our x values. And then for our y values, we're going to have uh, some other group of numbers. Kind of random, but that's fine, that's the goal. Then we run this, it'll create a plot based off of those numbers. Now, typically, we don't want to manually put in all those numbers. We're doing calculations using Colab because we don't want to have the numbers already. So, for our x, we're going to use the linspace command. And what this does is it creates an array automatically between two points. So we're going to go between 0 and 4, and we're going to have 11 points. And just like plot, if we hover over linspace, we can see what the usage should look like. So if we look at this, we have a start value, a stop value. Those are the first two. And then it says num is equal to 50. If you see anything like this, it means that it has a default value, but we can override that. So the default is to have 50 points. We're going to just have 11. So we're going to have 11 points between 0 and 4. So let's comment out these other two lines because they'll be broken if we don't do anything else. And then let's just print x to see what this linspace command does. And so you can see here that our values are 0. 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.2, and so forth, up to four. So we're between zero and four. And if you count these, you'll see that they're exactly 11 points. Going back, we want to use math in order to find y. So an easy way of doing that is to just define x minus two, for instance. So we can use an equation based off of this array that we've defined, and then we can plot those values. So this is kind of an ugly plot, but we see that we're going from zero to four in the X and we're going from negative two to two in the Y. And so Y is equal to X minus two at every point on this line. Let's make this a little bit more interesting and square this value. Now the squaring in Python uses this double asterisk rather than the upwards caret. So just be aware of that. If we do that, now we have a parabola and we know that we can modify the parabola by adding or subtracting at the end. So let's do plus one. And we get the minimum value at two, as we expect. And uh, that value is one. So this was a very basic plot. What we'll do now is try to create a plot that's useful, apply some labels to that and make it a bit more interesting. So again, we're going to copy these three lines of code. And this time we're going to calculate the radius of the circle from the area using the same bit of math, but this time we want to make it into a plot. So let's grab all of the information from before, just copying and pasting all of this. And then instead of having a single value here, we're going to use the linspace command to get points from zero to 10, and we're gonna have 101 points. And then the radius is still gonna be the exact same formula, Instead of printing, we're going to plot the area of the circle as our x-axis and the radius of the circle as our y-axis. And so this will be our new plot. And so we can see that we have essentially a square root curve, but this is calculating the radius from the area. And so we want this plot to be readable in some sense. Right now, it's very difficult to know what's going on because we don't have any labels. And so let's add some labels. So in order to add a label to the x-axis, the command is just x label. And then inside, we're just going to put a string. That will give us that area of the circle in meters squared down in the x-axis. And then the y label command does something very similar just for the y. And so this is going to be the radius and that's gonna be in meters. Now, one final that we can, thing that we can do in order to clean up this plot is define exactly where we want the axis to be. 
And so the way we do that is we set the x min, x max, y min, y max. So this is going to be 0 to 10 and then 0 to 2. So that'll get 0 to 10 on the x axis and 0 to 2 on the y axis. So instead of going from a little bit below 0, it'll be exactly at 0. And so now we see that our plot actually starts at 0, 0, and it goes to 10 and 2. So it's always nice in my mind uh, to have plots that start and stop at good clean numbers. It's easier to see what's going on. Now, there's a lot more that we could do with that plot, but that is plenty for today. This was intended to be a basic tutorial of how to start up Google Colab, how to use it to do some basic coding, both basic calculator type coding, and then also how to do some really basic plots. In any case, I hope this was helpful, and I will catch you next time.